Look at that, dude. That thing is shot. What's going on, guys? So in today's video, we're going to be replacing some very important parts that I think a lot of people, including myself, are guilty of not replacing when we should. So you go out, you buy you a 5, 10, 15-year-old truck, right? Slap a leveling kit on it, throw some 35s on it. looks amazing, but all of a sudden, you're having to fight your steering wheel going down the road, and your tires are completely shot in the first 10,000 miles. You're probably wondering, why in the world has this happened? Well, it's because you didn't replace any of your front-end components, and they're probably all stock and worn slap out. So you're never going to be able to maintain a proper alignment when your front end is not sturdy and it's also going to really affect the way that your truck handles as well so in today's video we're going to be replacing pretty much everything except for the gearbox itself and the upper and lower control arms but i've accumulated quite a bit of parts that i feel confident is going to make everything all around much much better and allow us to go get a proper alignment because i do not want to eat up these two thousand dollar mud grabs that i just put on the truck right so anyways let's go ahead and pull the truck in the basement i'll get all the parts laid out i'll show you all what we're going to be replacing and then we'll start this install so here's all of our parts that we're gonna be installing today. And obviously we went with Moog. Feel free to comment down below and let me know what your experience with this brand has been. But we've got our inner and outer tie rods. We've got our idler and pitman arm. We've got our idler bracket. We've got a pitman arm puller and a pickle fork. So about two weeks ago, I actually ordered kryptonite tie rods for this truck and they still haven't been able to give me an update on when they were gonna come in. So I decided to say, screw it. I canceled the order and I was able to get all of this for just a little bit more than what the tie rods themselves cost me. So I think this is gonna be a major improvement over our stock parts and obviously i'll give you all my first-hand experience if anything goes bad or if they hold up great which i think they will we don't have anything crazy we just got stocks and 35s i think all of this is going to be a perfectly good upgrade for the truck so let's go ahead and jack it up get the wheels and tires off and get this install started y'all this is why it's so important to replace these parts this is me just by hand moving the brake rotor you'll see how much play is in that arm right there Look at that, dude. That thing is shot. Should not be able to do that by hand. Let's go ahead and take our tie rod off, 18 mil. You can use whatever tool you want to to knock this tie rod out, but I'm a firm believer in the good old hammer. Just like that. All right, now. For the inner, all you're gonna need is some type of crescent wrench that will fit on there. I got this weird one that I found, and we'll just twist that off. So yours is probably super crusty like mine is. Let's work it on there. You can use your little cheater wrench or something if you need to. Break it free. Like that. Ooh, loud noise. Finally. All right, I got the other tie rod off, got everything doused in liquid wrench to hopefully help me out some. We're gonna take these bottom bolts off of our idler and pitman arm. Put this bolt back on here just a little bit in case when we take this off, this falls off. I don't want this bar to whack me in the face. Now we've got to tackle getting this guy off of our pitman arm. Ah, all right, sick. All right, should be lefty loosey rotty tidy, right? Oh yeah, no problem. Now we need to remove the gearbox so we can swing this down in order to get our Pitman arm removal tool on here because we cannot just do like the lower portion where we put the pickle fork on here or we'll tear this gearbox up. So undo the three bolts on the outside, swing it down, get this off. These are gonna be a 21 or a 13 16. So I slid the gearbox over some. Now we gotta work this tool on there. Now we should be able to just tighten this down and pop this pitman arm out. Mm. Always a great time for the battery to die.
Well, you may or may not have seen in the last scene where the original, one of these that I rented, completely bent, this bent, and I obviously did not remove our key. So I went to three different auto places, AutoZone, Advance Auto, O'Reilly's. They all have this same crappy tool that I'm guessing is probably from China. And so I have to get this off. So I went ahead and returned the other one, which they did accept. And I got another one of these. There's none better. I even went to Tractor Supply. This is my only option today, and I have to get this done today, or I'm not gonna be able. To, I'm, I'm not gonna have anything to drive. All right, our cut is pretty much through. I don't want to go through and mess it up, so I'm going to try to jam this in there and hopefully it'll pop out. Oh my God. <laughs> it's off. I. I want y'all to know how bad that sucked. It looks like it's all pre-greased, so that's good. We might throw a little bit more in there just for the sake of it. But start that on there. Take an eight mil. Now we're ready to throw back in there. All right, let's go ahead and work our new one on here. Carefully line it up, get our teeth the grooves going. Honestly, I'm not even going to fight with it. I'm not going to hammer it. Nothing. I'm going to put this on there. And I'm going to get our bolts back lined up properly. And then I'm just going to tighten this down. And that should bring it back up to where it's supposed to be. All right guys, it is a 22. Assembly should swing out of here. Out she comes. <laughs> so I went ahead and pumped some grease through here to get the old junk out, and I used some Q-tips to go in here and clean it out. And there was definitely some nasty crap in there that you don't want going back into your new components. So definitely a good idea. But now we can actually throw this back in, bolt it up to our pitman arm. All right, I went ahead and put our little cushion up there. Now we can run that up, take our new bolts. All right, so now we're ready to throw our new idler hanger and our idler arm back on that side of the bar. So this honestly probably comes pre-greased, but I'm gonna go ahead and pump some in there because I don't know for sure. We should be good to go. Throw this back up in there with our new arm. Go ahead and install this. Now 
we go. I don't know why they don't have these pre-installed. I guess maybe they think they might break, break off during shipping or something, but. You cannot put this on after the fact because it's hitting the sway bar. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to loosen this, put this on, and then mount this back. Out, swing this up, put this on there. There we go. All right, now we're on there. <laughs> we can put this back in. Let's put our bottom nut on. Hold this idler arm onto the bracket. Gonna get that started. Put a little cushion guy on here. And we want to go ahead and put this on the bar before we do anything, get it tight or anything, so we don't have any issues getting it on here. There we go. All right, now we can mount the bar to the pitman arm. done so now we're ready for our tie rods all right so here's our old completely clapped out stock tie rod we've got to place together or put together our new one take your inner tie rod you're gonna run one of these bolts up it this is what locks down the inner and outer of course we got one more grease fitting throw in the outer the other grease fittings we installed was an 8 mil this one's a 932 Nine thirty second, whatever. Boom. All right, now we want to basically just make this one the same length as that one to be somewhat close on our alignment. We'll obviously do all this adjusting during the alignment, but we want to get it as close as possible for the time being. Right there, so we're just going to tighten this nut down so that this does not have any possibility of backing out. We're ready to throw our tie rods in the truck. All right, boys, we're on the final stretch of this install. Thank goodness. Take your little cap off. Take this. Work our tie rod in. Now I'm going to use the impact very briefly just to get this started, but not go all the way tight. Just to get that going. We'll tighten it down by hand. Boom! Make sure to throw your four cotter pins in. Cotter, 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 cotter pins. I saw you on the last video, clown. I mean, it, who freaking cares? Cotter pins, cotter pins, whatever. Anyways, one, two, three. And four. Make sure you throw those in there. That way those bolts have no possibility of backing out. So I'm pretty much done with the install. Just got to throw my skid plates back on and clean up this huge mess. So I'm going to do that and then I'll catch up with y'all tomorrow. All right, guys. I wanted to give y'all an update about how the truck is riding after doing all of those front end upgrades or replacements, whatever you want to call them. So overall, the truck feels 100% more solid. There's no more slop or like clunking whenever you hit bumps and stuff, which it did before. You can obviously tell those arms were just completely shot and it was just terrible every little bump in the road it was clanking and felt like something was loose which it was those parts were just slap worn out right which hopefully y'all can hear me I think this is the first video i've done in the truck with since the mud grab so i know it's super loud it was already loud before i'll try to talk loud so sorry if i'm screaming but um yeah i mean i haven't gotten an alignment yet that's going to be coming up monday i've got one more thing i need to do to the front end of this truck before we get the alignment done um which doesn't really affect the alignment but i want to do it before anyways so um yeah overall steering is a hundred percent i would say a hundred it's a ton ton better right so it's much more firm steering is much more direct you can still tell right now that the alignment is not perfect right of course it's not i actually had it towed in i i, I like it it was one of those nights where you like you work late into the night and you're very frustrated and you finally get everything together and you're like kind of brain dead and so I, I got done with it and I looked at it and I was like, man, this thing is towed way out. Like I'm not even able to drive it. So I 
get under there, I crank my tie rods in real far. I'm like, oh, that looks good. I sit it down and it kind of pivoted when it sat down. Had it way towed in. Um, drove it for like a day and it was just terrible. Um, it was darting all over the road. So I ended up spreading it back out, doing like an old timey measurement uh, to kind of get it straight. Um, but it was horrible at first, but then once I got it somewhat in alignment, it's a million times better. It's not bouncing, it's not giving me any issues like that. So it's it's awesome right now. And I can just tell after I get the alignment done, it's gonna be game changer. Holy crap, this chick is on my bumper. I hope she passes me so she, so she can be on YouTube. <laughs> People crack me up. It's hilarious. I filmed a video the other day because I was in Larry and this lady in this new Chevy SUV um, whatever smaller than a Tahoe was just riding my bumper right on my bumper and I'm like dude these people are real confident because I'm in literally a thousand dollar truck and I could just lock this sucker down you could rear end me and I don't even care if it didn't put a dent in the bumper of Larry oh my neck like that happens all the time people do insurance scams and stuff I'm not I wouldn't do that but I'm just saying people are like overly confident like okay I'm gonna ride this obviously very old trucks bumper like uh, literally a foot behind any anyways different getting off topic <coughs> trucks riding great 100 get under your truck shake it feel see if those um your idler and pitmer arms are completely shot my truck only has 150 i say only it's got 150 you know whatever we at now we're at 159,000 miles now so um you know a lot of trucks that y'all might have you're probably 200 250 or you know it could be lower or whatever but generally the trucks i see for sale on facebook and stuff they're around that 200,000 mile mark so if you just bought your truck this is definitely something to look at like i said just jack your truck up grab it by the brake rotors shake it back and forth and you can tell uh, or even shake it by the tire and it's kind of harder to see that way but um yeah you can tell and it like y'all saw this is not a fun install it sucked it absolutely sucked those tools maybe you can buy a nice one offline that'll actually break that pitman arm free. I obviously had to cut mine off, which was very tedious and worrisome because I didn't want to tear up the gearbox, which we're gonna replace the gear. Bro, why did people park in the road? This car is half, a third of the car is still in the road. Anyway, we're just sightseeing at this point, but yeah, uh, it, it sucked. It, it was, it was, it sucked. But I am replacing the gearbox at some point. We're gonna go with a was it Redhead or something like that? The upgraded one should make it feel even better. That's probably the biggest difference between the old and new trucks. I'm used to them. I'm a little spoiled, man. I'm a little spoiled. I've been driving my new trucks. Um, the steering is super sharp and agile on those. And you know, you get an older truck and it's got a ton of slop and stuff. And so that's what we're doing. We're beefing it up. We're getting it all fresh so that it feels good. And it 100% feels better now. Like I'm not having to fight the steering wheel. There's really very minute movements that I have to do to keep the truck, you know, happy going down the road. I mean. It, it's it's a lot lot better 100 percent so anyways y'all saw it kind of sucked but in the end of the day 100 percent worth the replacement of those parts because the truck is much more enjoyable wow okay let's get on your side of the road we're just seeing everything this guy was crossing the bridge literally on in the middle of a bridge so um yeah and i will say this this truck for some reason rides much better with weight in the bed i know that's a common thing on diesels but why is that on this truck like i've got a set of wheels and tires in the back it rides dramatically smoother the rear of the truck does sometimes the rear of the truck can be pretty bumpy i don't know that's weird let me know is there something i need to change in the back i do also want to go to bilstein's over these um rough countries just to see if there is a dramatic difference i put the bilstein's on my lbc when i had it and i really did enjoy them uh we're at six minutes dude i'm gonna quit rambling I'm, I'm rambling too much this video is probably already like 25 minutes long so i'm gonna end it off there install 10 out of 10 sucked majorly but at the end of the day after getting done with it great it's one of those things like certain things in life absolutely suck when you're dealing with them but then after you complete it and you're done you're like dude what's it even matter it's in the past it's done and i'm going to reap the benefits of doing that thing so yes definitely suggest you do this if you don't want to tackle it go get it done if yours is clapped out just go pay a shop get it done you're going to enjoy driving your truck a lot more it's something you have a direct connect with is your steering so um, either do it yourself or pay a shop to do it either way i definitely suggest you do this upgrade refresh your front end parts um, your truck's going to thank you you're going to enjoy it more so anyways enough rambling i'll see you all in the next one